Hello everyone! Today I've started a brand new farm because we're going to be looking at the community center. Not only what it takes to complete it, but also what the reward is for completing each and every section. So when you start a new file, you'll obviously find the old community center in pretty rough shape just north of Pierre's store. At first, there's really nothing you can do with it. You can't go inside it, it doesn't even tell you the correct time, it's absolutely useless. Your first opportunity to do anything with it is going to be on the 5th of spring. That was fast. Now in order for this to work, you need to enter town from the bus stop, at which point you'll be rewarded with this amazing cutscene involving Lewis. Hi Lewis, how are you? What an eyesore. If only we didn't have a completely useless mayor who might have fixed this up already. This is the Pelican Town Community Center, or what's left of it anyway. Because nobody bothered to do any upkeep at all. We have a town full of people who don't really do anything, but no one wanted to be involved with this. It used to be the pride and joy of the town, but always bustling with activity. Now just look at it, it's shameful, an accurate representation of the leadership of this town. These days, the young folk would rather sit in front of the TV than engage with the community. And then what about the old folk? Are they also not doing anything? But listen to me, I sound like an old fool. You look like an old fool. Georgia Corporation has been hounding me to sell them the land so they can turn it into a warehouse, which by the way is also a much quicker and easier option, but it's not as involved. Pelican Town could use the money, but there's something stopping me from selling it. I guess old timers like me get attached to relics of the past. All well. If anyone else buys a Joji Corp membership, I'm just going to go ahead and sell it. That is pretty much letting you know that that's an option. Fairly expensive, but we're going in. Just kidding. I've had enough of Lewis already. So let me show you what this is all about. Also, as I was saying earlier, the only way to activate that cutscene is to enter town between 8am and 1pm from the bus stop on a sunny day from the 5th of spring onwards. Other than that, I don't think it really triggers. So, entering a building, you find this dilapidated room. Nothing you can do with it yet, it's all just a big mess. To be fair, this is still nicer than Pam's house. So the only thing you can interact with so far, and this is important, is this thing. As the yellow Junimo fades into the distance, this is a language that I cannot read. But interact with this thing, and then go about your day. Now the very next day after you're pulling your B&E at the community center, you get a letter from the wizard. My sources tell me you've been poking around inside the old community center. Why don't you pay me a visit? My chambers are west of the forest lake in the stone tower. I may have information concerning your rat problem, in quotes, and he has a weird name. Obviously, we need to go talk to the wizard. And, of course, we're rewarded with a cutscene. Ah, come in. Thank you, I'm already ten feet inside the door. Very observant for a wizard. I am Resmodius, seeker of the arcane truths. Mediary between physical and ethereal. Master of the seven elementals. I ate a rock once. Keeper of the sacred cha- You get the point. Yes, more than enough. Can we just get to whatever the point of this is? And you, DF, the one whose arrival I have long foreseen. That's because you sent me a letter in the mail summoning me. Here, I'd like to show you something. Behold. And he summons a Junimo. These are also something you can enslave later in the game. Fun fact. They're slow workers, but they're free. You've seen one before, haven't you? I don't know, you tell me. You seem to keep a pretty close eye on me. They call themselves the Junimos. Mysterious spirits, these ones. For some reason, they refuse to speak with me. I... Take it most of the town actually does. It's probably your purple hair and wizard attire. I'm not sure why they've moved into the community center, but you have no reason to fear them. Otherwise, I'd be completely terrified of apples with arms. Hmm, you found a golden scroll written in an unknown language. Yes, most interesting. Stay here. I'm going to see for myself. I'll return shortly. And off he goes. Yeah, cool. I'll just wait here. I've got nothing better to do anyway. Not like I'm starting a new farm or meeting the villagers or anything. There he is, back already. I found the note. That's because it doesn't move. Good wizard. The language is obscure, but I was able to decipher it. We, the Junimo, are happy to aid you. In return, we ask for gifts of the valley. If you are one with the forest, then you will see the true nature of this scroll. And I guess I am now, but I, the wizard translated it, so that's kind of a gray area at this point. Hmm, one with the forest. What do they mean? You asking me? You're the wizard. Aha, he says. He's come to a conclusion. Come here. Yes. Good idea. Let's stand next to the boiling cauldron that's leaking green smoke. My cauldron is bubbling from ingredients from the forest. Is it made of junimos? Baby fern, moss scrub, caramel top toadstool. Can you smell it? I bet the junimos are really happy you're boiling things alive. Here, drink up. Let the essence of the forest permeate your body. This is got bad things written all over it. In real life, don't ever do this. If a wizard offers you green stuff, don't take it. My character looks like he's currently having a stroke, which he probably is. The wizard's gonna take my kidneys, and we're hallucinating. All right. 
So at this point, just sit back, relax and enjoy the ride. It'll all be over within a few hours. As long as it doesn't have a flare up the next day, we'll be alright. You've gained the power of forest magic. Now you can decipher the true meaning of the Junimo scrolls. Just what I always wanted. Now at this point, you're going to want to go ahead and walk your way all the way back to the community center to chase that same Junimo away, at which point we can now read the first bundles. Now looking at our very first bundle, we have the Summer Foraging Bundle, the Winter Foraging Bundle, the Exotic Foraging Bundle, the Spring Foraging Bundle, and the Fall Foraging Bundle. Those are all pretty self-explanatory. They just go by the forageables for the seasons. The Exotic Foraging Bundle, you've got to go a little bit out of your way to find this stuff. And then we also have the Construction Bundle, which is just made of construction materials. But the first one you're going to be able to complete is the Spring Forging Bundle. By now you've probably already seen all of these items lying around the countryside. So you're going to want to pick a few up along the way, doesn't matter what quality they are, just go pick them up, bring them on in. This bundle, obviously very easy to complete, shouldn't take you more than a day or two. You might even have the items on you because in the early game it's good to have lots of forageables. So after completing that, we get this. 30 spring seeds, which you can either plant or selling these is actually pretty valuable in itself. But that is the first reward you're going to get. Once that happens, you also unlock a new room with new stuff to do, plus a fish tank. So already we have a lot more options of things we can complete. We'll go take a quick look at this room right here. So we get the spring crops bundle, which again, pretty self-explanatory, made out of spring crops. You just need one of those. There are also summer crops bundles and fall crops bundles. So you're going to want to go ahead and prepare and plant accordingly through the seasons. An artisan bundle made out of all sorts of animal items as well as fruit tree stuff. The quality crops bundle, these ones you do want to pay careful attention to because you get one of these per season basically. Parsnips in spring, you need five gold qualities, so you're going to want to do a lot of each crop to make sure you get the five gold qualities. Also consider fertilizer that gives you extra gold qualities just to be sure. The animal bundle, which is obviously purely animal items. And the fish tank of course is all this fish you catch, well, pretty much where they say you're going to find them. The ocean fish are in the ocean, crab pots come from crab pots, lake fish, night fishing, river fish. Also note that the reward for finishing different rooms is all different. This gets you the glittering boulder removed. Not actually a great reward, so I wouldn't really rush to get that one done. The pantry's reward is the greenhouse. This one is really awesome. So you're going to want to try and work hard to get all this stuff done. If you can get that done for the first year, winter is that much better. By the way, if you didn't know, a lot of these items can be found from the traveling merchant. She appears every Friday and Sunday every week. I would recommend going to check with her every day she's here because she can sell a lot of the things that are really hard to find or out of season. Because some of these things aren't even possible to get in your first year so if you manage to find them here, buy them. Well let's just go ahead and complete some of the forging bundles because they're pretty self-explanatory. If you can't finish these then I don't think there's any helping you at all. So once you complete the summer forging bundle you are rewarded with surprise surprise summer seeds. And of course, once you finish your second little bundle, you get rewarded with more stuff to unlock and complete. But some of these are a lot easier than others because I like doing things in order. We're going to go ahead and finish the winter foraging bundle. Also self-explanatory, except I did it wrong. Holly is useless. We needed a winter route. Back on track. And guess what we get for completing this? We get winter seeds, which are completely the same as the other ones, except they do actually grow in winter. So if you want something to do in winter, consider planting those. They are actually somewhat valuable. And that of course unlocked us yet another room. The last one we have to do obviously is the fall one, which again, very self-explanatory. Fall complete and the reward again is more of the same. Fall seeds. And another bundle done means another thing unlocked. I believe at this point we have all of them unlocked. Another easy bundle to complete is the construction bundle. Wood is obviously everywhere. You cut it on your farm, it comes from trees. Same with the stones, you find them in the mines on your farm. Wherever you see a rock, you can break it, it will give you a stone. The hardest part is the hardwood, which is still very easy to find. All you need is an upgraded axe. And then it's just a matter of breaking all the logs that look like this. Anything that is different from the usual sticks on the ground or trees that grow will give you hardwood. If you've somehow already made the wise decision to cut all the hardwood on your farm, well, you can find more in the secret woods and it spawns every single day. So you can cut all this hardwood every day and it actually gives you really good foraging experience on top of that. Now for completing this, bundle completed, we are then rewarded with a charcoal kiln. Turns 10 pieces of wood into one piece of coal. That is fairly useful because you're probably going to find yourself with an abundance of wood as you play and you're going to need coal for a lot of smelting, a lot of ores in the early game. So it doesn't hurt to get this, set it up on your farm. Keep it topped up with wood every now and again, especially overnight. Now the last one, the exotic foraging bundle. Luckily, you only need five of the available nine items. Now the coconut and the cactus fruit, you're probably not going to get a hold of in your first year because you need to go all the way to the desert to get those. 
However, the cave carrot, the red mushroom, and the purple mushroom are probably going to be found in the mines if you spend any time at all down there, at least the red mushroom and the cave carrot. The purple mushrooms are rare, they're valuable, but you're going to want to give them up for the community center. Now, the moral mushroom can be found on your farm if you have the forest farm set up, which gives you forageables on your farm. It can also be found in the secret woods. So the secret woods might not be a bad thing to unlock early in the game with an upgraded axe. Also, if you have your cave set up for mushrooms on your farm, it can also produce you a morel and it's going to be before too long, so that's another option. Now the other three items, you're going to need a tapper to get. If you want to go this route, this is not a bad route to go. All you need is level 3 foraging. If you run around picking stuff up off the ground, like you should be, it should be hard to hit this level. Then all you got to do is make a tapper, put it on one of the three appropriate trees, and after a few days, it will give you one of these items, depending on what kind of tree it is. Pine trees give you pine tar, oak trees give you oak resin, and maple trees give you maple syrup. So your simple finished product might look something like this. Bundle complete. That one is fairly effortless to do. Secret Woods are going to make that one a lot easier for you. Your reward are five Autumn's Bounties, which is just an item that gives you a lot of energy, a lot of health, plus two foraging, plus two defense. Mostly what you get out of these are energy and health. Once we're done that, we're obviously complete the room, and then it's a Junimo party. Everyone's having a good time except me because I'm confused, and we get a cutscene. We are the Junimos, keepers of the forest. And they fix up the room. Once you've done a room, it gets filled in with all sorts of nice furniture and wallpaper. Room complete, and that's how you know you're done. Every time you finish a room, one of your little Junimos goes to gather a star out of its little Junimo hut and then places it up on the board. Gold stars for everyone. And there's our progress so far, one of six. Now in order to claim your reward for finishing any one room, you're going to have to sleep on it. That is when the magic happens. So our reward for finishing that room is the bridge repair. So overnight, the Junimos, doing whatever it is Junimos do, fix the bridge to the quarry, which is up past the mines if you don't know. Now we can walk into this big area, which is mostly full of rocks, the occasional sticks, and it does produce ore at a slow rate and even slower gems. So every once in a while, it wouldn't hurt to come by here once a month, whatever you want to do, clear it out, take all the good stuff, get rid of all the rocks, and take whatever gems you might find. I've always found the real use for this is basically extra real estate. You could put all sorts of crystallariums, smelters, furnaces, whatever you want up here instead, because the rocks don't really do anything for you. The gems and valuables show up so slowly that it's just not worth your time. I tried for 10 years, I believe, in this game to try and make it produce something worthwhile. It still wasn't even close to full of gems. Do you want to know what my favorite room of the community center is? It's this one. Do you want to know why? Because all you need is money to complete it. We have a 2,500 gold bundle, a 10,000 gold bundle, a 5,000 gold bundle, and the biggest, a 25,000 gold bundle. I've always liked this one the best and found it the easiest because I've always been about making money in this game. Then all you gotta do is fork out a bit of money. 35,000, 40, 42,500 gold is all it's gonna take. That's not a ton of money. In your first year, it might be a bit. Do the first one, you get chocolate cake. What a reward. For 5,000, we get 30 quality fertilizers. That's actually pretty good. I always say fertilize everything you can to get the most money out of it. So that actually gives you a little bit back. 10,000 gets you one lightning rod. Lightning rods put on your farm. On a stormy day, they get hit by lightning, produce you a battery, which are very helpful things. 25,000 gold gets you crystallarium. Put a gem into a crystallarium. A few days later, it produces you that gem again and again and again infinitely. And just like that, the room's done. That's why it's so easy. All you need is some money. Done. And of course, a heart moving cutscene. This house was empty for something and it's done. Perfect. Juno was going to do a zinc. Give us another star up on the board because we are in fact a star. This obviously would be my room, big office, big desk, and giant safe full of my millions of dollars. And of course, we need the reward for this room, so that means going to bed. During the night, these awesome Junimos summon the mighty Pam back to her iron chariot. Now, as soon as the bus is fixed, that gives you access to the desert right away, which could be a good thing because like I said, some of the forging bundle, the exotic forageables, come from the desert. So all you gotta do is complete this one, go to the desert, get the cactus fruit and the coconut, then it's really easy to complete the forging bundle. Don't believe me? I'll show you. As soon as we get to the desert, there's two cactus fruits right there, a third one there. There's going to be a coconut right here somewhere. Easy peasy. Now, my next choice of room to complete would be this one. Why this one? Well, because it's basically all stuff that comes from the mines. I always spend a lot of time in the mines myself. All you need is a copper bar, an iron bar, and a gold bar, so that's just a matter of finding the appropriate ores and smelting it. That one could probably be done within a day. You probably have that stuff on you. The geologist bundle, well, this stuff all just spawns on the mine floors itself. It's like a forgeable item. You just pick it up off the ground. You're going to find a ton of this stuff as you make your way through the mines. That's no problem to find. 
and the adventurer's bundle comes from killing monsters. Kill enough monsters as you make your way through the mines as you will, you're going to find this stuff in no time as well. So for completing a blacksmith bundle, I went a little overkill on those ones. Simple as that, like I said, you're probably going to complete that one within a day or two. This whole room can be done very quickly, you get a furnace. And well, the problem with that reward is you already have a furnace if you've made these bars. So it's kind of a redundant prize, but it's still an extra furnace regardless, and you need lots of those. Well, let's do all the work it takes to complete the Geologist Bundle. I gotta click over there and then back over here. I work way too hard. Bundle complete. The reward for this little guy is... 5 Omni Geodes, which are actually pretty good. You break those open at Clint the Blacksmith. They'll get you all sorts of good things, potentially anything really. Prismatic Shards worth 2000 gold can come out of those. Artifacts of the Museum, the sky's the limit. And the last bundle... You only need two of these items, so this one is actually super easy to do. You're probably going to get the slimes and bat wings first because slimes are in abundance. You do need 99 slimes, but those add up quick. The bat wings, well, you're going to run into a lot of bats. Whatever the case, kill monsters in the mines, you'll get this stuff in no time at all. The reward for that is a small magnet ring. Slightly increases your radius for collecting items. That sounds kind of useless, but it's really not. That just means you don't have to get quite as close for items to be sucked into you. Yes, sucked into you. We're happy to help. It's not our house after all. Well, it's not my house either, but here I am building it. So that room is now complete. Of course, we need to go sleep to get that reward. Now, of course, for doing this in realistic order, these two rooms are probably going to be the first ones you can do because all you need to do is the mines. You don't need any different seasons. You just got to work your way down. And this one, you just need money. So those two are very easy and straightforward to do. Probably going to be the first two rooms you do. During the night, the Junimos once again do their things to fix up the minecarts, which for some reason run all around the town. Probably originally designed as a quick way to escape the Pam. When she shows up, hop into minecarts, move to another part of town. The closest one is right beside your farm at the bus stop. From here, you can take it to the mines or into town. And by town, it means the far side of town, down by Clint the Blacksmith or all the way up to the quarry. This is also a way to get into the quarry from the backside. So unlocking the quarry isn't necessarily necessary if you get the minecarts done first. And this would be a quick way if you fill this up with crystallariums or furnaces, whatever. You just take it from the bus stop to the quarry and back again to work all your new real estate. Let's fix this up a fish tank, shall we? Now the one thing you need to understand about this is there's basically three different places where you can catch fish. The ocean, as implied by the ocean fish bundle. The lake, which is the lake fish bundle. And the river, which is the river fish bundle. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to catch all these in one season. I would start in spring until you catch whatever you can catch in spring. Move on to summer winter and then fall. So let's start with the river fish. The first one you're going to be able to catch is going to be the catfish. It can be caught in spring and fall during rainy weather. Rainy weather is the thing to remember there. You'll know if you catch this one because it's hard to catch. It jerks around a lot. You're going to have to work for it. You can actually find the catfish in summer in the pond in the secret woods. Again, having the secret woods unlocked helps a lot. And if you want to know where the river is, well, it's right here. It runs through town all the way down to the south of town. This is all considered river. The sunfish, also simply caught during spring and summer in the river. Not super hard to catch, pretty common. You're not going to have any trouble finding this one. The shad can be found during spring, summer, and fall. Lots of opportunities to get this guy. Also in the rain. In the rain. This one has a little bit of a limited time frame from 9am till 2am. So, all day. If you're having trouble catching any of these, sometimes they are time specific. So it might not hurt to look up the time or just keep fishing because sometimes they go in specific times. For example, this guy cannot be caught before 9am. Now the final one, it's probably going to take you the longest to get, obviously, is the tiger trout. It could be found during fall and winter. Fall and winter from 6am till 7pm. So it's not a night fish, but it's probably going to be the last one you catch because you have to wait all the way until fall to get it unless you find it sooner at the traveling merchant. The reward for finishing river fish is 30 bait, which you probably used a lot more than to catch these fish. But in saying that, always bait your hook. Next, let's take a look at the ocean fish bundle. Well, the ocean fish obviously are found in the ocean. The ocean presumably is this big body of water found to the south of town right by Willy. There are many different fish to catch here at different times in different seasons. The first fish you're probably going to get a hold of is the sardine. You find that in spring, fall and winter. Not very hard to catch. You'll get these probably more commonly than anything else from 6am till 7pm. The tuna can be found in summer and winter. Summer and winter, so be sure to catch this one hopefully in summer, 6 a.m. till 7 p.m. The red snapper can be caught from 6 a.m. till 7 p.m. It's caught during summer and fall, rainy weather only. Always take advantage of rainy days when you play this game. That's my first thought every time there's rain. One, I don't have to water my crops. Two, catch the fish can only be caught on rainy days. I can actually be 
caught during winter if you use a rain totem to make it rain. Lastly, your final ocean fish is the tilapia. It can be found during summer and fall. Summer and fall, 6am till only 2pm. And the reward for finishing the ocean fish bundle are 5 warp totems to the beach. I admittedly don't often use these, but if you want a quick way to the beach for 5 days, well, go ahead and use them. Next, we'll take a look at the lake fishing bundle, which is a largemouth bass, the carp, the bullhead, and the sturgeon. Lake fish can be caught in a few different spots. The place I always go for lake fishing is right here to the right of Robin, the carpenter. Also worth noting that this is the most valuable place you can fish during the spring if you want to make money. And yes, all the lake fish can be caught in this lake. The largemouth bass is found right here, 6am till 7pm all seasons. These are worth a lot of money too, so early game money, largemouth bass. The carp is found anytime, spring, summer, and fall. No time restrictions, you're going to find a lot of these super common fish, not worth a lot of money. The bullhead found right here, anytime, all seasons. Also very common, very easy to catch. The one that's going to give you trouble is the sturgeon. Found only in summer and winter, 6am till 7pm. Summer and winter, it is fairly rare to catch. Don't give up if you're not getting it right away. Keep casting, you'll know when it bites because it's hard to catch. The reward for finishing the lake fish bundle is a dress spinner. The metal tab and colorful streamers create an enticing spectacle for fish, increasing the bite rate when fishing. This just gives you a slightly better bite rate. If you're going to get it, you can use it if you want. It is worth a few bucks, so if you want to sell it, that's fine too. I don't really use ones like this because if you have bait, or better yet, wild bait, you don't need any help catching fish. You're going to catch tons. And probably my favorite of the fish tank is the night fishing bundle, the walleye, the brim, and the eel. The easiest of these to catch is the brim. It's found in the river, 6 p.m. till 2 a.m. 6 p.m. till 2 a.m. all seasons, very easy to catch. Next is the eel, found simply in the ocean, 4 p.m. till 2 a.m. So it's got a pretty long time frame. After 4 p.m., that's nice and easy. Spring or fall, only when raining. So you'll be able to catch this in your first spring. Again, take advantage of those rainy days. The walleye can be caught only in fall, 12 p.m. till 2 a.m. It does have a wide time frame, but only in fall when it's raining found in this pond, rivers, and lakes. So anything that's not the ocean, essentially. The reward for this masterpiece is a small glow ring. It emits a small, constant light because you were night fishing the whole time. This helps in the mines. Other than that, I wouldn't really wear this. Once you hit fishing level three, which you're going to fairly quickly, you're going to get the crafting recipe for crab pots. These are obviously very important for the crab pot bundle. Now, thinking back, we have three different places where we can set crab pots, the lakes, the rivers, and the oceans. Go ahead and set a pot in all of these locations, and you're going to find all this stuff eventually. Some of it comes from the ocean, some of it comes from rivers, some of it comes from lakes. And it's just that easy. A crab pot will produce you an item every single day, whether it's garbage or something of use. All you got to do, one crab pot in either the lake, river, or ocean. Bundle complete. The reward for this amazing crab pot bundle are three crab pots, which you clearly already have because you completed the bundle. And last but not least, and what is possibly the hardest bundle to complete for the fish is the specialty fish bundle. Puffer fish, ghost fish, sand fish, wood skip. Well, the puffer fish is found in the ocean, 12 p.m. till 4 p.m. in summer. You also might remember that I found it at the traveling merchant earlier. Now the ghost fish is found in the ponds in the mines. Anytime, any season, you'll hit the ponds every 20 or so levels. Just go ahead and cast in there. You'll find a ghost fish before too long. The sandfish is found in a place which obviously has lots of sand. The desert. That's right. It's found in the pond in the desert. Not sure how there's able to be a pond there, but there is, and it's full of sandfish. And lastly, the wood skip, as you may have guessed, comes from a place with a lot of wood. And no, I'm not talking about Marnie's bedroom. I'm talking about the pond in the secret woods. This is the one and only place to get the wood skip, with the exception of the traveling merchant. Again, check there every Friday and Saturday. Just do it. The reward for catching those annoying specialty fish is a dish of the sea, which gives you 150 energy, 60 health, and plus 3 fishing. Not super useful. And then of course, because we completed a fish tank, it's another Junimo party. They are really happy because I caught some of the fish from nature and put them in an enclosed space. So many wonderful bundles, thank you. And it's done. And again, our sleep reward. Now what they do here is remove the glittering rock that's blocking the pond entrance to the mines. Now in order to take advantage of the reward of the glittering boulder removed, you'd obviously need to go to the mines from where that boulder was removed, at which point you'll be rewarded with a great cutscene with Willy. He basically tells you that this stream is flowing from deep within the mountain, he can tell just by looking at it. At which point he notices something shimmering in the water, what could that be? Yes, that's quality ore, because of course it is. You know what this means right? Basically what it means is every once in a while now you'll see this glittering in the water, 
Use the gold pan he's about to give you to pan and it will give you ore. I've always found this reward not really so great because the ore itself is fairly rare to find in the water. You don't get a lot of it. And by the time you've actually finished all the fish bundles, you probably have more than enough ore anyway. But the fish tank does need to be done. It's fairly hard to do, fairly time consuming. The reward isn't great, but it just needs to be done. That leaves only two rooms to go. We're going to start with the pantry. Obviously, logically, the first one you're going to do are the spring crops. Now obviously you just buy these seeds from Pierre, you plant them, they grow, you bring them here, it's that easy. Make sure you don't miss any for any season, otherwise you're probably waiting until next year unless you have the greenhouse, which you don't because you get for completing all these. The reward for that, 20 speed grow, makes your plants grow a little bit faster. Summer again, exactly the same principle, buy them from Pierre, plant them, grow them, love them, and bring them here. The reward for your summer hard work is one quality sprinkler, which is actually pretty good, waters the eight adjacent tiles every morning which saves you the trouble of having to do it yourself. Fall is more of the same, it's just a matter of making it all the way to fall. Yams, pumpkins, eggplants, and corn, all from Pierre, all straightforward. The reward for that would be a bee house. Put that outside, it will produce you honey every season except winter. Do not put them in your greenhouse, they don't work there. Produces you honey every few days. If you plant flowers next to the bee houses, it makes the honey more valuable because whatever kind of flower it is influences the kind of honey it produces. Next is the quality crops bundle I mentioned earlier. Well, as you're going some of those things, obviously make sure you do enough of them that you can manage to get five gold quality. Remember, quality is not guaranteed. If you grow 10 parsnips, you're probably going to get two gold ones, three silvers, and then five regulars, something to that effect. So grow lots to be sure you get the numbers. And obviously you're not going to find gold quality at the traveling merchant, so don't miss these. And of course, you only need three out of the four, so you can be done this by summer because you can grow corn in summer. The reward for completing quality crops are a preserves jar, it turns vegetables and pickles into fruit and jam. So once you have one or more of these, throw whatever crops you have into the preserve jar and it makes it more valuable. It takes more time, but makes it more valuable. Next is the animal bundle. This one is pretty straightforward to accomplish, but you're going to need both a barn and a coop, both upgraded. Because milk comes from cows, you're going to need an upgraded barn for that. Large eggs come from happy chickens. Large goat milk comes from a happy goat. Wool comes from a sheep and duck eggs come from ducks. So you're going to need the most upgraded versions of both the coop and the barn. After a while, you'll just get these items. This is pretty straightforward. The eggs are definitely the easiest. The wool is easy to get from a sheep. And then the cow's milk. The goat's milk and the duck egg are probably the hardest of those to get, but it's just a matter of what animals you have, really. It's all pretty straightforward. You get a cheese press for doing this, which turns milk into cheese. And that actually increases the value by quite a bit. Lastly, the bundle, which is the hardest of the pantry, is the artisan bundle. This one obviously gives you a lot of options, you only need half of which to complete the bundle. Things like the apple, orange, peach, pomegranate, and cherries all come from trees you can grow on your farm. These can also be found in your cave on your farm if you went for the bats instead of mushrooms. Simply grow them in the appropriate seasons, plant them ahead of time because the fruit trees take a long time to produce and you'll get all you need. Also, jelly comes from that preserve jar I mentioned. Depending on what you put into it, you get a fruit jelly. Honey comes from the bee house. It will just produce you honey once in a while. That's easy. Cheese comes from a cheese press. Milk turns into honey. Goat cheese is the same principle, just with goat's milk. Cloth comes from sheep. You turn that wool into cloth using a loom. And truffle oil. If you have pigs, they'll find you truffles. Put that into a truffle maker to make you truffle oil. This one is going to take a bit of work considering you need animals or trees. But a combination of a few animals with a few fruit trees will get you to where you're going. You're probably going to have a cow anyways for the milk. There's your cheese. A bee house I already have for one of my rewards. So that's easy honey. I have a preserve jar. So that's three of those plus three of these you're going to find along the way. No problem. Again, remember what can be used for this because there are a lot of them. So check the traveling merchant. Make sure if he has any of these, buy them immediately because it will save you lots of time and trouble. Anyways, once that one's done, the reward for this little guy is... One keg. Place a fruit or vegetable in here, eventually it will turn into a beverage. Some of the most valuable stuff in the game is wine. Buy some starfruit from the desert, grow it in summer, turn it into starfruit wine, and you will make tons of money. When we're done here, we'll return to the other world. I wish you'd hurry up. So that's room 5 of 6 complete. And the reward for this, which in my opinion is the best reward, is they fix up your greenhouse. Unfortunately, that bundle does take a lot of work to complete because you need to get through a bunch of seasons and also animals. But if you can manage to accomplish this by winter, well, you're just that much further ahead because now you can plant whatever crops you want in winter. There's a total of 120 spaces in here. It can grow any crop any season. Normally in winter, there's basically no crops you can do with the exception of the winter seeds. But this will give you the opportunity to do all sorts of crazy things like grow 
dark fruit, ancient fruit, and sweet gem berries, which are the rare seeds, any time of the year and make you a ton of money. If you line the sides of these with seed makers, you can grow one ancient fruit, put it into the seed maker, then grow three ancient fruit. Put those into the seed maker, grow nine ancient fruit. You get the picture, you can multiply crops in here super quick, super easy. That's what I used to do to make tons of money. All right, well, let's go finish whatever it is we have left in that community center of ours. The bulletin board. We have the chef's bundle, the dye bundle, field research bundle, enchanter's bundle, and fodder bundle. These are all fairly annoying to get. The bulletin board is often the last one I'll get to because everything is so annoying. But let's start with the simple fodder bundle. You need wheat, hay, and apples. Well, wheat is simply a crop that grows in summer and fall, so that's straightforward. Buy it from Pierre, grow it. Hay can be bought from Marnie. Or if you have a silo, cut the grass on your farm with a scythe, it will turn into hay in your silo. At which point, withdraw it, bring it here. Apples grow from trees. You can grow apple trees on your farm. Grow an apple tree on your farm, take its apples, bring them here. This one can be done fairly easily. The biggest challenge is waiting for summer to do the wheat and then fall for the apples. Apples grow on the trees only in fall. The reward is a heater for keeping your animals happy during winter. I have no idea what the point of that is, but if you want your animals to be happier, then great. Next, I think the field research bundle is probably the next easiest. Purple mushrooms come from the mines. Also, if you have the forest farm, they will occasionally appear on your farm. If you're familiar with the famous mushroom level, then you're probably going to find lots of purple mushrooms along the way, and you're probably going to have a few stockpiled. Nautilus shell shows up on the beach in winter. So wait for winter to get this one. If you see it at the traveling merchant, buy it there. Otherwise, you're waiting till the end of the year. The chub is found in the mountain lake and river during all seasons. You're going to catch a lot of these. I think this is actually the most common fish in the game, so bring it here. Frozen geodes are geodes that are frozen. They're found in the frozen levels of the mines mostly, which is 40 to 79. If you spend any time in the mines, on those levels you're going to find a frozen geode before you know it. The reward for completing this little bundle, which like I said is fairly simple to do, is a recycling machine that turns fishing trash into resources. So you find all that garbage fishing, put it in a recycling machine, it can actually give you some pretty good rewards, like refined quartz. I never really bothered to actually use these, but it is actually fairly useful, especially if you do a lot of fishing. All right, well, let's do the dye bundle. The dye bundle is the red mushroom, which we've covered already, can show up in forgeable items on your farm if you have the forest farm or in the mines, or if you have the mushroom cave, the mushroom cave. Sea urchins are found on the right side of the beach after you use 300 wood to fix that bridge, which many people do in the early game. Sunflowers simply grow in summer and fall, so those are pretty straightforward. Don't forget to grow those. The duck feather comes from ducks, so you're going to need an upgraded coop. Eventually, the duck will love you and produce you a duck feather. Aquamarines come from the mines. They have nodes themselves. They can also come from geodes. Not too hard to find. Spend some time in the mines. You'll find plenty of these. And the infamous red cabbage. The problem with red cabbage is it's a year two crop. Pierre doesn't sell these until year two. So if you're hoping to get this done in year one, you're going to have to get lucky and find these from the traveling merchant. If you don't happen to find one, well, you're boned. You had to wait for summer year two. So like I said, this bundle is fairly hard to complete. You kind of get this stuff all over the place. Most of it's fairly simple, but that duck feather and the red cabbage can be hard to get if you don't plan for it. And red cabbage, well, that's just basically luck. So the reward for completing this annoying bundle is a seed maker. So basically what those do is if you have a crop that's ready to go, put it in a seed maker and it will give you one, two or three of the seeds. So it basically multiplies crops, you just have to grow them. I think there's a 1% chance it will also give you an ancient seed, so there's always that. Well, next let's just go ahead and dive into it. Moving on to the chef's bundle. We covered maple syrup briefly earlier. You make a tapper, put on a maple tree, gives you maple syrup. Fiddlehead ferns come from the secret woods. Again, the secret woods will get you many of these items in summer. Summer secret woods. Truffles come from pigs. Pigs need a fully upgraded barn. They're expensive, but worth it. They'll find you a truffle, bring it here. Truffles are also valuable. Poppies are simply a crop that grows in summer. You're going to want to go ahead and do that. The fried egg requires you have an egg and also an upgraded house. You need the house with the kitchen, then a fried egg is simple. Now the Mackey roll is a recipe you need to first acquire, which you get on the 21st of summer. Every Sunday, your TV will give you a new recipe. There's also a repeat on Wednesdays. So the 21st of summer, you're going to want to go ahead and get this recipe. From there, all you need is any fish, any seaweed, which you're going to have if you've done any fishing, and then one rice, which you can buy from Pierre. Alternatively, this recipe can be bought from the Stardop Saloon for 1500 gold, which is a quicker way of doing it if you want to go that route. This bundle is fairly time consuming, takes some effort to complete, but again, just one of the ones it needs to complete it, so hopefully my guidance helped you a little bit. 
The reward for that bad boy is three pink cakes, because who doesn't like cake? Also gives you an obnoxious 250 energy and 100 health. Lastly is what's known as the Enchanter's Bundle that takes oak resin, wine, rabbit's foot, pomegranate. So again, put that tapper to use on an oak tree, which will give you oak resin. Wine can be made from that keg we already have. Simply put one of our fruits into there to get fruit wine of any kind. Now to get a rabbit's foot, you need to have a rabbit, which involves an upgraded coop. Once your rabbit is happy enough, it will occasionally leave you a rabbit's foot for some reason. It's also a rare drop from the serpents in Skull Cavern. It's about a 1% chance. Now the pomegranate comes from a tree. Pomegranate trees are a fall producer, so you're going to want to go ahead and plant those in summer. Or if your farm cave has the fruit bat option, you're going to find these once in a while. And the reward for this guy is 5 gold bars, which isn't bad, that's enough for one tool upgrade if you have the iron quality of some kind of tool. Bring it to Clint, pay some money, get the gold quality tool. Other than that, sell the gold bars. The last bundle, farewell DF. And with that, the community center is complete. We get a nice little cutscene, shows six stars, all done, all sorts of colored Junimos, waving goodbye, hopping around, all very happy, they don't have to be my slave anymore. The Junimos have returned to the spirit world, where they belong. So this place is all done, top to bottom, looks very nice, doesn't look like Pam's house anymore, looks like a place that I'd want to live. Now once our community center is finally done, simply enter town on a sunny day that is not a festival and we'll be rewarded with the final cutscene for it. Marnie, parting as always, very happy, we got balloons, children are playing, the whole town is just loving it, all this hard work you did, well, they kind of appreciate it. People actually hanging out inside, Pam is in the kitchen, no doubt going for the fridge to drink all that wine we donated. Everyone else having a good look around. Willie's at the fish tank, no doubt admiring the fish he can never catch. The mayor is very happy. I'm not sure how you did it, but the community center has never looked better. Well, you know what? I actually tried. You've done Pelican Town. A great service. Everyone in town is pleased. Yeah, they better be. You took a lot of time and effort to do this. As a way of saying thank you, I'd like to present you with the town's greatest honor, the Stardew Hero Award. You earned it. So that is basically the great reward for doing all this is you get a statue. But we're interrupted by someone, Grumble Grumble. Who's that? It's Morris. For those of you who don't know who Morris is, he owns the Joja Mart. Sales have been plummeting. Where have all my customers gone? Well, instead of buying things, they're for some reason here. I don't know why that's a problem though. It's not like they can buy things here. They still need to go to your store to buy stuff. All my customers here? This isn't good. Again, it's not really a problem. They're just checking out the new community center. They'll still have to go to your place to buy stuff. And Pierre comes up. And for some reason, I have the choice to control Pierre, so we're going to settle this the old-fashioned way. They're going to fight. This means nothing. I'll just run a 75% off sale and my customers will come crawling back, begging for forgiveness. You'll see. No, not this time, Morris. I think it's time we settle this once and for all. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, and how do you propose we do that? George is there, getting in on the action. Primitive. Just like your brain. If you're too scared to fight me, then bring one of your Joja co-workers. Or are all Joja employees such cowards? Oh, them's fighting words. Insult me all you like, but don't you dare slander the good name of Joja. And here's where they tee off. Square off. Look at him go. George loves it. He was a prize fighter before he was, you know, crippled. You're even weaker than your fresh produce selection. Burn. And the way you throw punches is just like Joja. Quantity over quality. Well, that still works too in a fight, I mean. Get him. George sets an instigator. Pierre's winning. And Morris just takes a punch and goes flying through the roof because Pierre is actually the Hulk. Morris and his Jojo Mark cronies are never heard from again because Morris was punched through the roof and, well, that's a fatality. So that concludes a community center. It takes a lot of work to do, but it is one of the things you need to do to complete the game. You get an achievement for it. And as an added benefit, on top of all the rewards you've already got, Pierre's store will now be open seven days a week. That's right, he's no longer closed on Wednesdays, which always annoyed me because Wednesdays tend to always be the day I go for seeds for some reason. So I hope you all found this guide somewhat useful, somewhat helpful, somewhat entertaining, whatever, whatever. You guys have any more good video ideas, let me know in the comments below. Other than that, hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.